what is in my background right now? Hang on. <laughs> what are we even looking at? Why? Where's my light? Hang on. Come here. Come here. Walk over here. Look at you. I need you. Thank you. All right. Hang on. It's not quite four, not four o'clock. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> if you're in the chat, hello, hello. I'm coming. We're about to have some fun today. Okay. Here we are. Oh, look who's here already. Madison and Jennifer and Faye Mushroom. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. It's just about, yes, it's four o'clock. Hello, I am Michelle and welcome to Unicorn and Centaur. Welcome to the weekly live stream. I do a live stream on this channel every week. And if you're watching this on the playback, this is not an edited video. We are doing this completely live. I'm interacting with the people in the chat. Hope you can catch us live next time. Um, so that's what's happening here. And today we are going to be making um, fake metal pieces like for costumes. It's so hard to explain what I'm doing. So it's not really like armor, but it's how to turn craft foam into pieces that look like metal to use for costumes for your horse or for yourself. Um, our, our live streams are our creative time. And thank you for coming to hang out with me. Zadel's here and Amy. Hey, and Trish, Red Cane Girl. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so I have, I've done this before on the live stream where I made a crown, like a fake metal crown out of some craft foam, and it took forever. I think most of the live stream was me like tracing things on cardboard and cutting them out. So boring. <laughs> so today I have things in front of me in like various stage, stages of completion so we can talk about each stage of creating um, something that looks like metal for your costume pieces. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. So before we get started, um, since last last weekend, um, this channel became eligible to have memberships where I can create extra content for people that um, sign up for memberships. And there's two different levels. There's a centaur level at $1.99 a month, and there's a unicorn level at $4.99 a month. And last week, since we started that, four members. We have four channel members. And y'all, we are so grateful to these people because they're helping me keep my horses. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the new members. Thank you to Kimmy. Thank you to Sheila. Thank you to Jen. Thank you to Kelly and Lana at Blue Raven Farms. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Part of the membership is a shout out in my live stream. So all four of my new members, not only are you getting a sticker and a thank you note from me in the mail, but let me know how you want to shout want me to shout you out at the beginning of all of my live streams, um, like Blue Raven Farms. Do you want me to give everybody your Instagram or a Facebook page? And um, Sheila, is there um, any website or anything you'd like me to direct people to? This is your shout out at the beginning of the live stream. So this is what memberships are all about. These are the people that are making, are helping to make all of this possible and to keep Unicorn and Centaur going. So I'm so, so grateful to them. When you are a member also, you get your name highlighted in green in the chat and you get a little badge by your name everywhere you comment that tells everybody that you are one of the people who are behind it all, so to say. How can I help? Well, you can be a member if you want. Anybody who wants to be a member, it's totally optional. All the content is, all the free content that I've still been putting out is still free. Live streams are free. There's a weekly video is, that is free. The extras are shout outs during the live streams. And then um, for the unicorn um, uh, level, you also get extra access to videos. I post one to two blooper videos per month. And um, you also get to see my videos one day early. So it's, um, I have to work a little harder, but you guys get a little extra for it. But again, that's just for people who have the funds to pay into a membership. If you don't have the money to pay for a membership, I'm just, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for every thumbs up. Thank you for every comment. Thank you for your subscription. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, but I need a little extra financial help. And those who are able to pay in are so much appreciated. I can't even tell you. But we're not going to talk about that the whole time. Uh, for Halloween, I'm dressing up as an elf with my boyfriend. That sounds fun. Oh, Jennifer, I love your centaur thing. I love Kate the Illusion. I know. Pretending to be a centaur is my favorite thing in the entire world. I I don't know if you watched my 
um, why I was sent to our video, but I talk about how when I was a little girl, I used to actually like feel like I could feel my centaur body behind me and I would like <laughs> gallop around. <laughs> I have no idea what I looked like as a little girl, but I was pretending that I was a centaur. It's always been my favorite thing. Oh, Zadel, um, under every video and live stream, there should be a blue, like right beside where it says subscribe or where you're subscribed, there's a join button and you can click join. And um, then I think it takes you to a page where it shows you, like it asks you what level you want to sign up for. I wouldn't recommend you do it while you're driving. You can do it at any time and it's okay. Um, I did a video about it, which is on the homepage of my channel if you want to go watch the video about it. Um, but let's talk about faux metal here. I don't have anything painted yet. What we're working with today is craft foam and I probably can get bigger sheets cheaper, but since I don't ever know what I'm really doing, <laughs> um, I like to get just the simple one sheet at a time from either Walmart, Joanne fabric. You can get these at pretty much any craft store. You can get any color you want, but I tend to like to start with black and then we sort of paint over that and go over that. But none of the original uh, foam is going to be seen um, when we're finished. So the color doesn't matter. You can get like, you can get hot pink foam if that's all they have. And it's not going to show. I don't think. Oh my God, don't quote me. <laughs> so two things I did. One was to, sh one, we're just going to make these little studs. Like here's, it's just two layers of foam. I've already got some sculptor coat on them to make them plasticky. But then this would be something that would go on like the side of a bridle. Like if you make, cause we're gonna paint it silver, it's gonna look like metal, like a metal uh, bolt or a, um, what am I trying to, like a, a metal stud. Um, so like, let's say you're making a gauntlet. Um, you could put these all up and down the gauntlet to make metal studs. Now, what I did to make these was I found two round objects, one slightly smaller than the other, and I traced the circles onto a piece of foam and cut them out. Um, we can demonstrate that in a minute if we want. Um, so here we go. So like I just cut out little circles, two different sizes, and then I glued them together with just some tacky glue, just plain old craft glue. Actually, let's do these, these two right here. So when you're doing craft foam, you want to make layers. So here I am. Let's get you guys down a little bit so you can see me. Here we go. Um, when you're working with the craft foam, you want to make it in layers. You don't want like one. There might be places you want one layer. I might be a liar. But so I'm just going to place that right there. I want to make sure it's centered, but depending on your project, it looks like an Oreo. Depending on your project, you may want it off center for some reason. This is simply what I am doing today. So I've got two more that I am just gluing together. I've made six of these. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So the more layers it has, the more interest it has. And now I have, whoa, see, I got to leave them alone for a minute so that it dries. <laughs> okay, so we're going to leave those alone for a minute. And I'm going to cap my glue because I'm a grown up. So then what you're going to do, oh, let me show you my sculpture coat. <clears throat> a lot of people do, um, let me check the chat, hang on. Hey, Madeline's here. And is that like Plasti Dip? I don't know. I have not used Plasti Dip. Can you do the Centaur of Attention? <laughs> um, I have an, an, the next Centaur of Attention video is either going to be in October or very, very early November. Um, so uh, uh, this is my, I just cracked into this today and I'm so happy. You know, when you crack into new art supplies and it's like, ah, uh, and when you were using an old one, you realize that the old one was like old and the texture and the consistency had changed. So you get the new stuff. Like the old sculpture coat I was using was taking like a day to dry between coats. This only takes a couple hours. And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot what it's like when it's fresh. This is sculpture coat, uh, sculpture coat. This is not sponsored or anything, by the way, at all. Um, uh, I just use this product. It is a plastic 
cream. So it's got like a really creamy consistency and you paint it on whatever with a brush. Um, so I'm using it in place of Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a sealer. Um, it creates a seal, but it's more like an Elmer's glue kind of consistency. Does that make sense? Whereas this dries a lot harder and firmer than uh, the Mod and thicker than the Mod Podge. So you can get what you want done with the um, sculptor coat with fewer coats. Um, one of the drawbacks of the sculptor coat is as it dries in places, it'll get gummy and pilly. Um, but you can very easily like pick out any pills or big lumps in it. Um, and then you get to peel it off your fingers and that's very satisfying. <laughs> um, so I really, really love this stuff. I think you um, can, I, I don't have a link to it in the description box of this live stream. I may put it back in the playback. If you're watching this on the playback, check the uh, live stream. Becca's here. Oh, and Zadel is a new member. Yay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Jungle Zadel. Thank you so much. You've been here for a long time, and it's good to have you here. Um, that's so exciting. I'm going to send you a sticker and a uh, thank you note in the mail for that. We have five members now. It's so exciting. So um, Plasti Dip, I think, is also a sealer. Yes. Um, I know cosplayers. I, I'm, I have not used Plasti Dip. I wonder if that is, this is water-based. Is Mod Podge water-based? Hang on. Does it say, Oh, no, that's French. I don't speak French. Puzzle saver sealer. It doesn't really, oh yeah, water-based. Mod Podge is water-based too. And I have used this before. It's got dirt and glitter in it because I brought it to the barn. And there's hair. There's hair in my Mod Podge. I forgot to leave it at the barn. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a mess. I can't let my brand new sculptor coat get that way. Ugh, I got the big bucket and it's heavy. <laughs> okay. So um, when I get ready to do that, I'm going to crack that open. I don't want to keep it open for too long because... Um, I don't want it to dry out. Hang on, let me get some water. We're doing ice water today. Is everybody staying hydrated? Oh my God, I forgot to ask everyone what you're making. Zadel's driving. But um, are you doing something creative with me today? Are you knitting? Are you crocheting? Are you drawing or painting? Are you working on a project or making things for somebody else or your horse? So I had kind of envisioned these things as studs, but now that I'm looking at them, like it might look cool on the side of a bridle. Like if you had a bridle and then just like put these over the hardware to make it look like more rustic. Anyway, here is an example of this hasn't quite dried yet. You can see how the sculpture coat, um, let me let you guys look at that up close. You can see how the sculpture coat is still drying. I really glopped it on that last coat though. Um, and this is just a ridiculous, I was just literally cutting shapes out. This is not representative of anything. It was just to show you what it looks like when you layer things. And you can see very clear and visible brush strokes in this. Um, let's talk about that, but doing this by this method, because I don't mind brush strokes. I am a costumer, uh, like a theater costumer. I'm not a costumer for camera or uh, photography or close up <laughs> work. I am a theater costumer. And I was taught that the things we make have to look good from 50 feet away on a running horse. That's it. You don't have to, it doesn't have to look perfect close up in the theater. It just has to give, it actually, sometimes when you exaggerate things and you make things in a different way for the theater, it creates a different illusion for the audience. So that's more my style and something like brush strokes that you have to be this close to see is not going to be anything that's going to bother me. It's not going to affect my unicorn photo shoots. It's not going to affect my daily life, my Instagram one day. But if you're going to Dragon Con or Comic Con, or if you're doing really close up work, I mean, I guess you could Photoshop blemishes and things like that out of it, but you may want to sand it down and make it a little bit smoother, um, which you can use like a very fine sanding block or very fine sandpaper um, to sand out and smooth out any brush strokes. But again, brush strokes do not bother me, um, especially when everything's all painted over. I think it looks great. 
Just if they look at you, you got your badge, Zadel. <laughs> Planning an Eowyn cosplay. Oh, that sounds so awesome. I better see pictures. Reviewing videos for online horse show. Maybe dig out sketch bed suit. Ah, sketches. I like drawing when I'm watching. Um, what I like, we'll make a playlist of YouTube videos and we'll just sit and watch YouTube videos while I'm drawing. It's one of my things. Cleaning your room. I need to do that. You don't want to see what's outside of frame. You don't. <laughs> Y'all don't need to see that. This is messy enough back here. <laughs> and sewing a costume. Nice. For you and your, it's, okay. So wait, um, say you said you and your boyfriend, um, what did I miss? What you guys were going as? Oh, dressing as an elf. So is he gonna be an elf too? The elf couple? That's very exciting. Okay, so what are we doing here? Yeah, it's nice. Oh, and I just, another reason I had my um, sculptor coat out is because I was finishing up these unicorn horns. They are now ready to paint, so hopefully by next week I'll have unicorn horns ready for sale. But I have, it's like all hard, but it's still, it's flexible enough that if it, it's not going to break. You might end up with your car in it looking like that, but all you have to do is heat it up with the hair dryer and like put it like that again, and it'll be fine. Um, it's made to be flexible on purpose. It's not supposed to be like eye stabby. Do you know what I'm saying? Jump show next Saturday, another one on Halloween. Might dress up for it. I love it. Oh, hoof shoes for feet. I really like those. Honestly, the hoof shoes. And I don't know, I, I love horses so much that I feel like I would want the hoof one, the regular horse hoof ones. But then it makes your legs look like a satyr, like a, a goaty goat. So like, would I want the goat ones? And then I could be a satyr sometimes and a centaur sometimes. <gasps> How exciting. Um, let me find my silver paint because we also have to paint things today. I brought out... <gasps> my little collection of unicorn horn paints with things like extreme glitter. <laughs> Hang on. Where are my metallics? There's pearl white. Here's silver. This is what we want, don't we? Oh, wait. Do we have a metallic silver that's already opened? This is important. Hologram. I don't think we'll want hologram to make something look like... Um, metal no we don't we probably don't want glitter either i don't know why i'm even going there black okay here's a silver that's open okay okay this is the one we want i do believe metallic sterling silver superior coverage and this is just acrylic paint I also have this Rust-Oleum clear gloss that I use to finish things. You gotta wait till your stuff is absolutely dry before you use this. Also anchored things down. These are still really light. If you make a bunch of little studs and you wanna like, do, a, you wanna do a coating and you're like, Psh, it's just gonna blow everything away like a cat breathing on a pile of catnip. It's gonna be like, you're gonna be like, no. So let's put you over there. Be nice. Becca, I'll throw some money at you in a few weeks. Oh, Becca. Hey, in the middle of moving, you watch every dollar, especially for that baby. YouTube is being weird. You know, the apps, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it never seems like you can do exactly what you want when you need to do it. <laughs> Autism Centaur is here. Working on stuff while drawing. Nice. Oh, and you have your kitty with you. Okay, so let me crack open. Actually, this doesn't need another coat. We're still waiting on this to dry so we can paint it. Oh, what I was going to do with this, <clears throat> I was telling you the little studs could be either for like any kind of armor that you're making to add onto that. Um, uh, but this I was thinking is like a cloak pin um, that holds together, you know, two sides of a cloak or um, I used to have a cloak. I don't know what happened to it. And in that case, what I would do is, because sometimes um, you don't necessarily want to finish the back of it. I don't necessarily want to put sculpture coat on the back of this. Um, and the reason why is because if I make it like a cloak pin, what I might do is 
use Velcro um, and put sticky Velcro on the back of this, like the male sticky side of the Velcro on the back of that. And then on the cloak where I would want it to join, put two uh, halves, two halves of an oval of the female side of the Velcro so I can pull it together. If it's just for a costume, so it could like, come off easily. So then this would Velcro on and keep your cloak on and you would look so cool. Another way that you can do it is to back it with felt and then use uh, fabric on the sides uh, to attach it. Here, let me show you. Wait. Hang on, you guys. Okay, I got one that's open. I got one that's open. It's a good thing about having a really tiny studio. Everything is all right here. <laughs> okay, so this is just like quilt binding, so it's not what you would use. But let's say you were going to use, you wanted to um, sew this to something somehow. You cut out a piece of fabric uh, or a piece of felt in this shape, glue it to the back. And before you glue it to the back, though, you glue a loop of fabric um, a loop of fabric on each side or the other side if you want. So then this fabric can be painted to look like the metal. So it looks like a little metal thing on the side. Then you can stitch this tab to a piece of fabric or you can run um, elastic or cording or leather or something else through the sides and that's how you can attach it to something. Uh, but you don't necessarily want to finish the back. Now, if I did want to finish the back, I would sculptor coat it, I would paint it, and then I might have to like drill holes in the side to um, attach it to something another way. But keep in mind, if you do this, it's not that sturdy. It isn't metal. So if you're using it, it, it can't take a lot of stress in a costume, even if you've got like a lot of layers, like this one's got four layers in the middle. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would personally do Velcro. Um, nowadays they have super strong Velcro, um, that with, especially with, if you use a wide enough area, like this is a large enough piece that the Velcro absolutely would hold unless your fabric weighs like 50 pounds. If you've got, I think there's like 20 pound hold Velcro. So if you've got enough heavy fabric in your cloak and some people do like, Hey, if you got a big, heavy cloak, go you. That's probably historically accurate. Okay, put these things aside. <laughs> Sheila's here. Hey, Sheila. Sheila, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. I gave you my shout out at the beginning of the video and my thank you to you as a new member. <sighs> I'm like, what are you doing? Say, you are having creative time with some creative people. <laughs> Have to go. See you later, Jennifer. I'm glad you were here. Spinoff for Halloween. Spinoff from Steven Universe. Oh, cool. And Natalie's here. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so what are we doing next? We've talked about our craft foam. We cut some craft foam out. We glued together layers. And I think it's time to crack open the sculpture coat and coat up some babies. So the sculpture coat, and I'm gonna have to actually look up Plasti Dip to see if that is similar to this. Y'all forgive me, the last bucket of this I had was a little one, and it had a really easy open thing, and this is one that you like need a, a screwdriver and a crew of heavily muscled men and a forklift. Lord almighty. Hang on, y'all. <laughs> Hang on, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And like, I have to reclose it and open it between each one. I'm going to get all sweaty. Hang on. <laughs> Oof. Lord. Okay. I've gotten two of them. There's like little things all around that you have to. Oh my God. I can feel all the blood rush into my face. I'm going to cuss. I'm going to cuss the bad right now my life. Oh my God. I'm not going to be able to get into my sculpting out. Oh wait, no, it's coming. Oh my God. I had to muscle it. I need a drink after that. Hang on you guys. That was intense. That was my aerobic workout for the day. My heart rate got up. I don't know if I'm okay. Please hold on. 
Nobody called 911 yet. Woo! <laughs> crowbar, right? I did need a jackhammer. Scott, bring the crowbar. Right, okay, let me get that away. It looks like a bucket of mayonnaise down there. I don't know if you can see like the little peaks and valleys. That looks cool. Where is a paintbrush? Give me a paintbrush. Let's use, using this one earlier. Here we go. This is our mood. I did that, excuse me. Okay, I think the ones that are really heavily done, I wanna actually paint so we can talk about painting them. I should paint those first before we do sculptor coat. Why did I do sculptor coat first? I'm not gonna close close it, I'm just gonna put the thing down. Let's paint first. I have not had any caffeine today, believe it or not. I know Becca doesn't believe it. Okay, this is family channel. All right. I am putting a little bit of silver paint, which I now need a different paintbrush. Let's, do we wanna do that? Let's do it. Just this little guy right here. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. That one. So this is one of the studs I made. I glued the two circles together and I added three coats of sculpture coat. The more coats you add, uh, the more, uh, the stiffer it's going to be. The, and the, um, so if you want it, whatever you're making, if you want it to stay nice and flexible, uh, this is really good stuff for you to be able to make really like flexible armor pieces. Okay. And this is gonna need several coats of paint. See, now it's like a metal stud, yay. Okay, and this one, that actually, no, that's this one. So here's another one. So, and I've got you right here. Doo, 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 doo. And I, when I do this, I don't know if there's a way to um, not get sculptor coat and paint all over your fingers. If there is, I have never found it. I just become a hot mess. I'm trying not to get stuff all over my extra equestrians t-shirt. <laughs> so our new merch, woo! -hoo! Um, I drew the original unicorn and Adriana, our wonderful unicorn, turned it into digital form. Okay, I'm not, I'm so tempted to paint this even though it's obviously not completely dry. Y'all, we're going for it, I'm doing it. I can't not do it. I am living my best life. This is how we're doing it right now. I mean, it's all going to dry eventually, right? For my first coat, I don't even care. We don't even care. We're going to make it pretty with the next coat. And again, if you missed part of the discussion earlier, I don't mind brush strokes on my work because I was trained as a theater costumer <laughs> where all of our work has to look good 50 feet away on a galloping horse. It does not have to look good close up. It does not have to pass close scrutiny so slot that on, girl. Don't let yourself be too much of a perfectionist. You'll lose out on your life. Okay. So there we go. And again, it doesn't look completely like this. We need one, more than one coat. Obviously, we're not done. I'm not showing this off to the internet like, oh, my God, look what I made. Um, one or two more coats of silver paint for that. And then... I don't know if we're gonna be able to paint anything. Here's my water cup, my, my unicorn and centaur mug, which you can get on my Etsy store. It's our paint cup today. <laughs> Making sure I'm not dripping water into my sculptor coat, even though it's water-based. Okay, now let's get into the sculptor coat. Let's put some sculptor coat on stuff. And I will, I'm just, I'm working right out of the lid. That's where I'm working right now. I've got my clean brush. I'm gonna stick this right over here. Come here, you guys. There you go. Maybe we can like really watch some more. Is this drying off center? Oh no, I'm having a moment. No, sir. 
You cannot be off center. That's upsetting me. That's making me mad. My little thing had migrated off to the side. How rude. How dare it? <laughs> Wear gloves. Wearing gloves. Yeah, I was thinking about that today. I, I'm not one of those people that likes to like when I'm making art and I'm making stuff, I like to have it on my hands. I don't know. I like to be touching uh, things. It's very tactile. It's one reason why living in Savannah really works for me and not having a winter here because I cannot stand gloves. I'm a very tactile person. I'm very touch sensitive and it's like frosting, very touch sensitive. And if I can't touch something, it's like, Oh, I should have waited for the glue to dry. It's like moving around. Oh no. Okay, I was just talking about myself and enjoying myself and my own artwork judged me. So see, I get it all over my fingers. The fun part about getting the sculpture coat on your fingers though is that it peels off like rubber cement or Elmer's glue. And if you're one of those people that really enjoys that sensation, if you don't enjoy that sensation, wear gloves please. You're gonna hate this, hi. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this one come through, come through. Do not slide around, do not slide around. Do not slide around. Um, I said I'm not worried about brush strokes, but I do spend a minute like really kind of working it in and making sure there's not any huge lumps or bumps. So I do anal about it sometimes. Okay, there you go, there you go. So now he, and I wipe it on my knee so I can peel it off later. Don't judge me, don't kink shame me. I'm just gonna leave that right there. Now I have these, I think this one has two coats on it and there's one that has one. I left these in all sorts of stages of development. I think once we um, uh, have some paint on these, you can really see where we were going with it. It looks white, it's gonna dry down clear and look like that. So you can still see that there is a coating of something on it. And again, you can glop it on if you want, or you can make really thin coats. You can also, like it says, sculpt. So if you leave like big lumps like that, it takes a lot longer for it to dry, but that lump will dry like a lump of hard plastic. So if there are parts of your costume that you want some texture, the sculpt coat can be used um, for that. Did I just lose my track of thought? I totally did. Oh, also we're doing a giveaway next week. Um, having another giveaway, it is a horse thing. So if you don't own a horse, um, you're probably not gonna like the giveaway. <laughs> Sorry, but it's a really nice thing I'm uh, giving away that I have that doesn't work for my horses. I only tried it on one of my horses once. It's really cool. So I'm like, I'm gonna do a giveaway um, instead of like selling it online. <laughs> so next week, um, I'm not sure what, I have to look at the schedule, what we're doing. If we're just gonna like play games and do Mad Libs and then have a giveaway or if we're gonna do something else. Like maybe I'll finish up some more stuff on this. I'll definitely be... Should I have touched that wet paint? Should I have touched that? No, I shouldn't have. Shh, you guys love me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that all I have to put sculptor coat on? Get out of here, you. <laughs> okay, this is gonna go in my water. Since this is water-based, here, come back here. Since, why am I getting notifications for things? Go away, I'm having a live stream. So that's gonna go in the water cup too. Okay, y'all. I am trying not to get a uh, sculpture coat on. It does suck getting it on your clothes, I will say, because if you don't rinse it out with hot, hot water and soap right away and really scrub it out of the fabric, um, it's just gonna dry as a hardened plastic lump embedded in the fibers of your shirt and it's sad because every time you you can feel it it's like it feels like a little hard thing to pick at and it's annoying tabitha so late but i'm here that's okay baby and my crafty mom and not mom i can be your uh i can be your online mom or i can be crazy aunt michelle i can be whatever <laughs> 
I should, forgot to thank you for making the video. Oh, thank you. Oh, and look, it's about right back here. This is um, my Artax sculpture that Autism Centaur, who's in the chat right now, made. And this is, oh my gosh, there's a cat hair on it because my cat was leaning against it this morning. Oh my gosh. So this is my one-eyed horse Artax with his purple mane and his unicorn horn and an eye patch. Is it the cutest thing? I love it. So I have that back there. And okay, what are we doing now? Did I do everything already? Oh, let's cut shapes out. So cutting out shapes out of card or out of this craft foam. Um, don't like it's hard to make two dimensional shapes into three dimensional shapes. So this is why one reason why I'm just sort of doing this with the little studs. I need to put it where you guys can see that. Um, um, because if you try something large and ambitious as your very first project, like if you're like, okay, I'm going to make a face chamfron for my horse and it's going to be covered with studs and edged in the, and it has like ed really cool edges on it. And, um, I'm going to make that and it's going to look amazing. Um, you're going to end up sad. It's going to not work because to turn a flat sheet into something three dimensional, you have to take like little tucks and darts in, in places. So you know, I mean, some of, to, for some people, this is obvious for, for some people, not so much. If you just think you're going to like use this and roll it up into a tube and that's going to be your arm thing. Well, your arm isn't totally shaped like that. It's thinner here and thicker here. And also when your arm is extended, this isn't as fat as when you've got it. See how it, see how it meets up right there. <laughs> it gets all meaty when you pull your arm in. So make sure when you are measuring yourself, um, it's nice to get help, but you don't just take this measurement right here and you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Because as soon as you pull your arm in, it's going to cause stress on that part right there and it's going to break. So I wonder if we could just do a simple strip, like a studded bracelet. Let's get a ruler. Let's get a ruler. <laughs> so having said that, I'm going to cut a straight strip of fabric <laughs> or a strip of foam. <laughs> Okay, here's my phone. You're at work, aw. Brittany's here, hey Britt. That's okay, I can be everyone's internet mom. I'm fine with that. Um, I think I need to, oh and here's my unicorn notebook. This, this has like got everything in it. Where did I find this? At Target, I think. I think it was a then there's more cat hair up here. Who's been sleeping up here? Rude. Uh, I think it was Loki. Loki? He has been such a mess lately. How wide is this? I think that's going to be wide enough to make a bracelet. Okay. So what I am going to do is a pencil marks up this craft foam quite nicely. So I'm going to mark two inches, two inches, two inches. So I made little marks, two inches, two inches, two inches from the edge. And again, if you like have your own process for this, or if you do this already, you're like, oh, is this lady really showing us how to draw a straight line right now? The answer is yes. <laughs> but some people like it spelled out. So I am going to cut, so I've got my strip here. And yes, it's got the little staple holes. Just shush. Don't judge me. 50 feet away on a galloping horse. That's how it has to look good. Okay. Put my arm over here. Okay, so here we go. So if this... This would be my bracelet. And then we're gonna put these silver studs on it. I hope the paint has, so we have these silver studs so it looks like it's got these metal studs. And of course the it would be painted too. So to do this, you might have to, you're going to have to mold it in the shape of like, if you want it to be an arm cuff, you're going to have to find a way, use clips, um, use things that to hold up against it, uh, but you need to mold it into the shape. You can't just let it dry flat. We need to curve it. Let's put some silver bit on this. 
let's put some sculpty coat. Give me that back. Give me this. Okay. Let's sculpt your coat this baby. So here we go. We got my sculptor coat. And I just cut a strip of foam. And we are going to sculptor coat it. Let me turn around so you guys can even see what I'm doing. So I kind of like that it starts out uh, white so that you can see where you have been. I guess if we were working on white foam, that would suck. But we're not. We're working on black foam and it's easy to see. And again, on these projects, because we're painting over it, you can start with whatever color foam you want. So if you're one of those hot pink lovers, you can get hot pink foam and make whatever you want. You can make a princess crown with this. You can make fake earrings. Like if you're doing some sort of elaborate cosplay and you want to make some sort of big old earring out of this, I'm going to do one side and let it dry. And actually, I don't know if I would do the inside of the bracelet. Actually, for the inside of the bracelet, I may do one coat so that I can paint it. But it doesn't have to have a whole lot. Okay. So I'm trying not to get sculptor cut on my phone. <laughs> my shirt and my phone. We're trying to keep that clear. So here I... I am setting it down leaving fingerprints all over it and putting it between two things so that it dries in the shape. And now wait, there's another one stuck to my hand. Okay. I have it sort of drying. Lolly's here. Hey, hello, Lolly. We are making um, things that look like metal out of craft foam. So I have, this is craft foam that you can get from Walmart or the dollar store sometimes or um, Joanne Fabric. And we cut it into shapes. I have taken, these are two different layers of uh, circles. So like a small circle and a large circle. And this has had um, several layers of this sculptor coat. And Lolly, you know sculptor coat. Your grandma um, is where I learned to use sculptor coat. From. She uses it when she makes her puppets. So I use that as a plastic cream coating. This is a piece that I layered up uh, with quite a few layers. And I think, honestly, that paint is dry enough that we can add another um, layer. Okay. That feels wet, so I'm gonna dry it against my leg because that's the kind of artist I am. I've always wondered how long some of you guys been here because I'm fairly long. Well, um, Lolly is um, someone that I know in real life. I um, worked for her grandmother at a puppet company for many, many years and learned a lot of the techniques that I know from her. Um, so, and Tabitha, a, a couple of these people, like I know y'all in real life, Tabitha, I used to work with, we did horse drawn carriage tours uh, downtown in um, Savannah, Georgia together. So here we go. I'm going to do another coat on this. So there are some of my friends. And then there are a few, like Zadel, who um, is here in the chat today. Zadel um, has been with me, gosh, I think since I had like 50 subscribers. <laughs> um, and has been here supporting me for everything. And my friend Sheila, I've known for many years. We've done theater together. We've written theater shows together. We've performed together on stage. Um, we are a theater family. You know how... Um, Theater is one of those arts that, because theater is a collaborative art, and puppetry is kind of like this too, it's collaborative. It's difficult to do a, a true one-man show. Even one-man shows have um, writers and consultants and uh, lighting and crew technicians uh, that work on the show. So um, theater is a collaborative art. And, oh no, I forgot where I was going with this. I better take a drink. Um <clears throat> My legs are covered in sculptor coat and paint. I don't mind. I don't think I've gotten any on the shirt. <laughs> if you want an extra equestrian shirt, we are going to do in the um, we are going to do another photo contest fairly um, soon, um, and it's going to be a costume one. 
in the Extra Equestrians Facebook group. There's links in the description box below. If you are on Facebook, you can join my Extra Equestrians Facebook group. And there's lots of really cool posts in there. Um, you know, all sorts of people post uh, pictures of their horses as unicorns and the really cool tech that they find and all the stuff that they make. Um, it's really neat. Uh, there's also my Instagram and then my Etsy store if you want an Extra Equestrians mug or, um, or, or Unicorn and Centaur mug or whatever. Okay, so let me paint these silver, but I need more silver paint. Loop. Yes, and new to this are channel memberships. I also have a Patreon. The perks on Patreon are slightly different than the perks on the memberships. And in the next coming weeks, I'm going to be working out, like, what is the real difference between Patreon and memberships? Or do I want to make them all absolutely the same? Um, so we'll see about that. Sheila is a rock star who is a patron and a member. <laughs> so, okay. So now I've got two layers. And now we're starting to look a little more metallic, a little more metally. That's wet. It's hard to tell. So once we get two coats on there, it looks like I'm going to need a third coat. Let me show you. Looks like I'm going to need a third coat because you can still very clearly see the black foam still underneath. So there will be a third coat of paint going on that. Now for the studs, um, the way I have described putting it on the um, bracelet over here or the cuff, I'm going to put the studs around a cuff and see what that looks like. Um, I'm not sure if I want to... I'm thinking of adhesives for the foam, just plain tacky craft glue is the best. Honestly, hot glue will melt the foam and just make it really everything really difficult to work with. And sometimes it just peels right off of things like this foam. So because the out, I'm going to be putting them on a surface that has paint and sculpture coat on it. Um, so I'm going to want to put at least one coat of the sculpture coat underneath on the bottom of this so that I can glue them together. And I will probably use hot glue at that point to glue plastic to plastic. Um, somebody in the Facebook group was talking about um, some sort of adhesive lately. That I had not, I'm not familiar with, or if I am, I didn't know what I was using, um, but I need to check it out. Something 6,000. I don't know if that's like a rubber cement kind of glue or if that's a super glue. Um, anyway, love doing live theater. Yes, I miss the doing live theater. Oklahoma doesn't have a lot of theater where you are. That's sad. Um, it's hard to get live theater in some places. Of course, it's 2020. It's hard to get live theater anywhere. Um, collaborative arts that you do with people all together, especially for an audience that's right there. So hard to do. Co musical concerts and live theater have really taken a hit this year, and it's just crazy. Oh, Zadel, and no need to apologize. We all have to take breaks sometimes. We all get busy sometimes. You have been here for me through thick and thin. Are the shirts on back order? Yes, I just checked on yours the other day. It was like held up for some reason. So I kind of like pushed it through. I sent a message to the lady. and I was like, hey. <laughs> oh, yes. It is now on the way. I'm sorry about that, Madeline. But yeah, I noticed I hadn't gotten a shipping up, uh, update the other day because I get um, emailed shipping updates when all of the orders go out. So I hadn't gotten yours yet. So I went and I looked and it was on hold. And I'm like, um, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, are we done painting for the moment? Let's put that back in the water. What time is it? It's 4.48. We are probably going to have to call this done soon because I'm down to just like having wet things. Now, as I'm saying this, let me show you. I end up, originally for this piece, the triangle parts weren't there. And my idea for finishing this out was to have like to cut out a unicorn head shape that I would put in the middle of this to have like a unicorn head in the middle of that. So it would be like, you know, a unicorn insignia. But I got lazy and I took some triangles and I put it over the top instead. But my... And of course, I was like, well, what would be easier? I almost did phases of the moon with a full moon in the middle and crescents on either side. I thought that would be cute as well. Um, and if you're going to do that, I would suggest 
like getting shapes and cutting them out. You could freehand them if you want, but it's easy to make your own stencils out of poster board or cardboard. And I strongly suggest, even though I end up freehanding a lot of the stuff I do, I admit it, <laughs> don't come for me. Um, if you are one of those people that likes clean edges and likes um, things very symmetrical and orderly, then it's pretty easy to um, make yourself a, a stencil. Like you can even upload things on your phone and lay a piece of paper on your phone and, you know, trace out a shape on your phone and uh, on a piece of paper and then cut that on and use that as your template. E6000, yes. It's like, so it's like super glue. It's crafting glue, really good for different materials. Ah, Jim sends on jewelry. Okay. I don't know if I've used that. I have super glue here, but recently I have discovered, I did not have not tried using it on foam ever before. And I tried using it on some of this craft foam for something I was doing to not like stick at all. I was like, that was when I got super glue all over myself. I almost, I was like, how did this not happen during a live stream? It was, I was doing something here. I was not filming myself doing something and I was working on a uh, super glue, um, and I was putting to get, trying to put together these two pieces and so they wouldn't go together. So all of a sudden there was like, I don't know, it was all wet and it was everywhere. And my, my initial reaction, like my, my fingers are covered with paint and sculptor coat. My reaction is to pick at these things. Like I will pick and roll them off my fingers and it's really satisfying to me. So the moment I realized that I, it didn't work and I had super glue on my fingers was like, <laughs> because I had to like resist every urge in my body, which was to, which would have immediately stuck my fingers together. No. <laughs> so I may have to try some of that E6000 and test. Uh, let me know you guys either in the chat or let me know um, uh, in the comments, if you're watching this on the playback, I really was thinking about doing a video comparing different adhesives. Like, which adhesives are good for which kinds of costuming projects. Um, because there are so many, you can't just buy one kind of glue, which is good for everything. Um, and hot glue won't do everything. Super glue won't do everything. Tacky glue won't do everything. Um, you have to have specific adhesives for a specific projects. So if you're interested in something like that, it's not, uh, it sounds weird on an equestrian channel to do something about adhesives, but I wonder if I did it in the context of a longer, costuming essentials video. Like here's a section, a discussion on adhesives and here's a discussion on fabrics, what kind of fabrics are good to use. And here's a discussion on other kinds of techniques. Hmm. I don't know, I'm just thinking. Think something that would be helpful for people and informative. Um, oh my gosh, the sculptor coat on my leg has dried. It's peeling off like Elmer's glue. Who, tell me in the chat, were you in elementary school putting glue on the palm or the back of your hand and letting it dry and then peeling it off in layers? Was that you? Because that was me. <laughs> in case you can't tell. Oh my gosh. This is so satisfying. I'm going to sit here picking at my leg. You guys. <laughs> It is 4.52. Let me show you what this looks like as it's drying. So this, I had it. It's sort of curved now. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I dropped it on the floor. So there are parts of it that are still wet that you can see and parts of it that are drying. And parts of it that have little fingerprints in it because that's how I live my life. <laughs> like and subscribe. Okay, so I am putting that where it's sort of uh, curved. It's drying curved, and we're going to sort of train it to curve that way to make it into like a cuff to put the, um, the studs on. So again, we've got our little studs that we were making, and I was just, you know, put those together. That still has the sculptor coat on it. Again, you can use Mod Podge, and you can probably use Plasti Dip. I have not used Plasti Dip. I have to look into that. And then here is what our studs look like with two coats of silver paint. I wish we had time for this because I can still see this is wet. But once I get three coats of good silver down on these pieces like this, once this is uniformly silver, what I'm going to do is take black paint and with a very dry brush, um, stipple dry brush, just a little bit um, around the edges and wherever there are, like where things would get grimy. We want to just kind of maybe take a paintbrush and line 
um, so that uh, the shape of it comes out a little bit more and then maybe dry brush the edges a little bit to make it look a little bit scratched, a little bit distressed, a little bit like it's been through battle or, you know, whatever it is you're going to go through. <laughs> All right. Liquid latex is great to feel. Oh, oh yeah. As long as, see, I had some sculptor coat on my leg earlier, like when I was uh, putting a coat on the uh, unicorn horns that are behind me. I was putting a coat of sculptor coat on those. I got a big blob on my finger and I just like put it on my leg, but I don't shave my legs. So like if I don't have it on my knee, my knee doesn't hardly have any hair on it, but I managed to put some in a part with hair. So I was like, let me peel this off. <laughs> no. Okay, so... I hope this gave you guys an idea. If whatever ha uh, Halloween costume uh, that you are going to make for you and your horse, or just for you, or just for your horse, if it needs little metal flourishes, um, a fancy brooch, or um, a cuff, or bridal hardware, or um, something that um, is just going to make your Halloween pictures pop out, they're going to make you stand out at the horse show, um, I hope this has helped you figure out um, how you're going to make that happen. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment on this later. Or a lot of you guys know me on Facebook too. Um, so you can message me on Facebook. You can tag me on Instagram or message me on Instagram. Again, everything you need to know is in the description box below. And again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all, no, all our new members. We have five members now. I will be sending you guys a unicorn and centaur sticker in the mail. If you would like to join uh, the membership, click the blue join button just below the video. But thank you guys. Thank you everybody who showed up in the chat today. I love you guys so much. Now I got to figure out how to get this ended. The awkward ending of all my live streams. Story of my life. <laughs>